in the Italian Alps lurks part of a formidable mountain fortification known as the Vallo Alpino or the Alpine Wall. Rows of concrete and iron teeth crown the ridges and the valleys below are lined with gun emplacements and bunkers for soldiers. Not started until 1938, this section of the Alpine Wall faced not a hostile enemy, but Mussolini's closest ally, Adolf Hitler's newly annexed Austria. Mussolini was rather distrustful of Hitler because he knew that Hitler had expansionist ideas in Germany and certainly had eyes on Austria. Now, this meant problems for the Italians because they had annexed uh, this one region of the South Tyrol of Austria after 1918. Mussolini, understanding Hitler, knew that Hitler would likely want to demand this territory and could attack Italy and take the Tyrol. Since World War I, fast-moving tanks had become one of the most dominant weapons on the battlefield. And Germany were the masters at this type of warfare. How could the Italian Alpine defenses halt Hitler's mechanized army in their tracks? So the dragon's teeth, or the Dentity Drago, were wooden poles that were pounded into the ground and then cast cement around them, capped off with an iron pyramid or, or cone. This creates a barrier for which armored vehicles and troops cannot pass through, and effectively funneling a large armored force into effectively kill zones. The Italians designed an elaborate network of interconnected bunkers and guns to stop any German advance. And the strategy was called defense in depth. But would it work? The idea of having multiple layers of defense is that you'll slow down the momentum of an attack, making it much easier to repel. Italian secret Alpine fortress. A fortified door to bunker number 20. The door opens up to reveal a network of passages that links secret rooms and machine gun posts. Local guide Ludwig Schopf knows just how dangerous it was. So we stay here in the machine gun room of the bunker number. And here, inside, were three soldiers. The room is outside of the rock. Here is beginning the rock, and here outside of the rock. And the soldiers know that they were the first people to die. The bunker was so well camouflaged to give the Italian soldiers the best possible chance of eliminating the enemy before they even had a chance to attack. They would cover the face of the bunker with a rock slurry material. You could not tell that this is not part of a cliff face until you're actually there and then the guns open up on you. But how secure were the bunkers themselves? The bunkers were built using a vast amount of concrete, up to 13 feet deep in places. What they did was they actually built concrete in and amongst the rock units to try and utilize the fact that you've got these strong rocks either side of the pass and act as a natural defense and then build around that natural defense with some man-made fortifications.